adventures welcome to the bucket list mermaid where we talk about everything travel bucket list now today we are going to beautiful colorado where i'm freezing my fins off and we're going to be talking about a pretty cool bucket list idea which is driving up pikes peak highway now what is pikes peak highway this is an epic scenic colorado drive spanning 19 miles with 156 curves up to the summit of pikes peak which is over 14,000 feet high now this is one of the most incredible drives i have ever taken up to the mountain that actually inspired america the beautiful it is truly a treat for colorado locals and tourists alike and not only is it fun to drive pikes peak but it's also fun to go up to the summit but first let's talk about what to pack if you are gonna drive pikes peak now i would definitely above of all bring layers and I cannot stress this enough it is over 14,000 feet and it is cold up there even with summer there's probably gonna be snow and it's freezing so definitely plan for this you might feel like wearing a t-shirt at the bottom but I guarantee you're not gonna feel like wearing a t-shirt at the top now another thing that you need to make sure that you have and it is really important is a full tank of gas they will actually check this at the toll gate because there are no gas stations along the entire highway and you do not want to run out of gas on this highway. More things that you can bring, water and snacks, sunscreen, even some sunscreen and hiking boots if you wanna stop the car and go for a tiny little hike. Another idea is some binoculars. You might be able to see some wildlife. And then of course, maybe bring your credit card and some cash because there is a pretty nice gift shop and a cafeteria up there at the summit and you gotta try the donuts. Once you get to the toll gate, you can actually make a reservation there or previously online. They'll check your tank of gas and they'll also give you a map, which I highly recommend next question do you need a reservation in order to drive this highway and the answer is yes I would highly recommend doing this online and you can also avoid any disappointment because I know that there are timed slots for the busier summer season now when is the best time to drive the Pikes Peak Highway let's just go really quickly through each season so you can figure out which one is best for you now number one is summer which is generally June through August this is going to be very crowded very heavily trafficked you're gonna need a timed entry for your reservation however there's gonna be no snow so it's generally going to be safer next is fall this is honestly my favorite time to go because i love to see the aspens and it's less crowded now there is a chance that you are going to get that top section closed because the weather can be a little bit more unpredictable during this time and next winter i would be very hesitant to go during winter because there is a lot of snow it is prone to closures it's not very safe if you see these videos this road is a little sketchy to drive and some of my family members won't even drive it so i cannot even imagine doing this in snow and then lastly spring you might get a few wildflowers during this time however this is still a very snowy time for colorado and it is prone to closures because the weather is going to be really unpredictable and they don't want you sliding all over the place in the snow and how long does this take you? They recommend a minimum of two to three hours. When I went, I thought that this was going to be enough time. However, I'm a very lazy and slow traveler and I got out all the time and I took pictures and I mermaided about and therefore I spent a lot more time up there and they do close the gates at a certain time. So just make sure that you are actually back down from the summit to avoid any complications. <laughs> Now you might think that you just drive straight back up and drive straight back down. However, there's actually a lot of stops that you can make along your route. That's why it's imperative to grab a map from the toll gate because there are a ton of little stops that you can stop, you can hike, you can take photos. And I would definitely ask the toll gate attendant what they would recommend. So I would make sure to budget extra time so that you don't miss out on these stops in addition to the summer. What I would recommend is going in the morning at the toll gate, grabbing a map, and then each place that you want to stop, just mark it on the map, go straight up to the summit, enjoy the summit, and then on your way back down, depending on how much time you have, stop at everything you marked on your map previously. Now next is driving Pikes Peak Highway Dangerous. I would say no if you know what you're doing and you follow all the rules. Now there are some places that are a little bit sketchier as in you're driving these higher mountain passes more towards the summit that don't have any guardrails. I would say that this can be a little bit unsettling for people who aren't used to mountain driving. However, if you go slow and you're just not intimidated by the person behind you, you should be just fine. If there is slippery conditions and snow, the road is gonna close. They're not gonna send you up there in dangerous conditions. So just use your best judgment, be a safe and cautious driver. I mean, it's about the journey anyway, so you're not gonna rush up the mountain anyway. So just take your time enjoy and arrive alive the entire way is paved 
and they also make you brake check your car just to make sure that you are equipped to handle the drive back down. So don't be alarmed if they do this, it's completely normal and it's for your safety. And also what I would highly recommend is there's actually a phone number that you can call on the day of your reservation just to check the road conditions just to make sure that everything is safe for your drive. Another thing that is worth mentioning is altitude sickness. Now this is a massive problem up here just because it is a very high altitude at over 14,000 feet. Now because of this, go slow, go steady. This is a journey, not a race. And if you do start feeling the symptoms of altitude sickness like nausea, dizziness, or anything like that, stop where you are and start descending slowly. Drink a lot of water and rest. And as always, if you do have emergency or you can't handle these on your own, just call for emergency services. Now another thing, will your car make it up this highway. Now just to put it in some perspective, I had a massive Ford 350 to pull my fifth wheel and we actually rented a car for this because we were nervous about the tight roads. It was fine. I think that there is a lot of space on the road. The parking spots once you get up to the summit were a little tiny and I don't think we would have made it so I'm glad that we chose to do this. However, if you have a really good car, maybe with some four wheel drive and good brakes, you should be just fine. And next, is it worth it to take the cog rail or drive? and my advice would be to do both. I have done both since I am a Colorado native and I prefer both of them. They are just different experiences. With driving, you have leisure, you have the freedom to do your own thing, you have more time at the summit, but with the cog rail, you just get to sit back and relax and just watch the mountain views. You have trains, but the only thing is that it's a little bit crunched for time and I have pushed it a little bit with my timing on these cog rails. I think it is really up to you and what you feel. If you don't feel safe driving the mountain roads, I would go for the cog rail, but if you just want to take your time and enjoy the experience, I'd probably go for the drive. Now, what should you do once you reach the summit and your destination? Honestly, the first thing that I would do is get warm in the summit house, which is newly renovated and it looks stunning, and go grab a donut. I don't know why these donuts are so good. It's the only donut that is made at this altitude and they're magical. Once you're done with that, you can explore the summit if you have good clothing. You can meditate, you can journal, just enjoy this bucket list experience, and then you head back down, and it's great. So that is it for the Pikes Peak Highway. What do you think? Do you think you would be brave enough to drive the Pikes Peak Highway? Is this worth going on your bucket list? Make sure to let me know below so that I can support you on your bucket list journey. And as always, thank you so much for liking and subscribing this video so that I can keep bringing you free mermaid content. Thank you so much for watching and happy bucket listing. Now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go warm up my fins because I'm so cold.